four. We have all four finance committee members here, and we're glad to have everybody here. We have two takey elects and uh, an elected official, our finance director of the press, and Mr. Steve Savage. Um, so we're in the budget process, and we're trying to kind of get down towards the end and wrap things up. We've got a few budgets to look at. Um, Justice Nelson's economic development, the district courts, a mental health grant pass-through, we want to talk about Justice Jackson's construction funds. And um, I think we're going to add two. Did you bring a copy of the motor fuel tax? No, I did, didn't. Okay, we'll just discuss it just a little bit. And um, then the elections budget. Um, so, ah, we have a, another elected official. Hey, Art. Party. Good to see you feeling well enough to come. I was, I was on okay. The wife was out. <laughs> I'm just fortunate I did. Um, let's look at the uh, bottom district courts first. None of this, uh, as far as the budget, is going to take long. And looking at these individual budgets, then we have some discussions to uh, to take care of. Uh, uh, we're going to decide on insurance cost share and raises. We're going to talk about selling vacation days. Then we'll back up for uh, the regular monthly meeting that will be in a couple weeks um, and talk about ordinances that we didn't get to pass last time. So, uh, looking at the district court budget, you know, we've got two district courts. We've got the Blavel and Osceola district courts. We've got Shannon Langston here in Blavel. It has been Judge Don Betterton in Osceola and will be Judge... Um, Catherine Dean, uh, taking Judge Betterton's place. So, Kelly, as far as uh, any major differences to speak of, we've talked about these district budgets a couple of times. When we talked about them the last time, um, you know, I was told to just kind of do it like we have been doing it. So, there was a 3% uh, raise that was figured in for the Osceola District Court Clerks. And I talked to the Blavel District Court Clerk this morning and she did not know if there would be a 3% raise for sure for them. But I went ahead and included it just in case since okay. we did one for Osceola. But it's carrying everything across except for the 3% raise. And just to be clear, we did decide or y'all did decide that it was just going to be salary and Social Security and Med Medicare. That's what we've done the last couple of years. Um, and so I did it the same way. But if you need changes, just let me know. What she's talking about there, you know, we, we talked about uh, the legal terms, what shall be done and what may be done. The shalls are legal requirements that we have to meet, and the mays are any additions that we care to add on. And so, um, we try to treat both courts the same. Um, we want to treat Blyville the same as Osceola, and Osceola the same as Blyville in, in the responsibilities that we cover. And, uh, and so we're covering the shalls, the ones that we have to cover. And uh, even though they may be requesting additionals, we've not, uh, we're not covering the add-ons, the maze. But we are covering our, our legalities and, and the have-tos. In these district courts, I, it is worth noting that the state now pays the salaries. You know, it started out as a pilot program, and, and one of ours, the one in Osceola, was one of the first pilot programs that was involved. Oh, maybe it was one in Blyville, Shannon. But, um, but now then, they're, they're both covered by the state. Anybody have any questions regarding the district court budgets? The mental health grant, uh, you know, that was a request. That's not really a, a, a true county responsibility, but one that we were requested to uh, pass along and fund through and, and help take care of. Uh, you, you've got a revenue sheet on the front, 
and then you've got an expenditure sheet on the back. Um, Kelly, it's half. Well, the revenue is the same as, it's almost the same as the um, expenses because the original grant was for $300,000 and the first money that we received was in 2019. And we just do drawdowns. When we're ready to pay bills, we just do a drawdown for that amount. And um, anyway, there was a little bit of a difference, like $87.37 between all of our drawdowns and what we've paid out. So uh, we expect to do a drawdown to finish out that $300,000 of AU27.625 plus the $87 that's sitting in that fund and that will be 300,000 in revenue and we once we do the drawdown in 2021 you know we will expend the rest of that money also so, it's so just, we're, it's we're budgeting what's left then yes yeah okay any other questions we, we didn't put anything in the contract labor line this time well i need to make a point with that I guess um, the 82 793 62 is what they have left to spend down now the budgets are actually approved through the Department of Justice and when it was originally uh, approved then COVID hit after that and so where you see their travel bond has quite a bit of money in there, but hardly anything that's been spent out of it um, in 2020. So what they what they did is they resubmitted an updated budget that was approved, but it was approved like late August, I think. Um, and I think what it's going to look like is moving most of that travel up to contract labor. Um, I just need to get the final numbers on that. So there may be there may be a line that needs to move, like travel may need to move to contract labor, but the amount, the bottom line amount is the same. That's all we can spend. That's so. all we've got and all we're gonna spend. Okay. Anybody got any questions on the mental health grant? What's my room number? <laughs> I want to know what his room number was in the mental health issue. Oh. <laughs> okay, these are the Blyle and Osceola construction budgets in the courthouses. I've got some questions for you. Okay. I want to know what who gets how much money because I'm a taxpayer. I want to know who gets how much money. Well, you know what? I sent an email the other day just for you that says so I want to know, know, know what each one of those guys yes, get. And Kelly is getting all of the she she just requested all of the contract <laughs> bids so we could go over them. I want to know what the wheelbarrow <laughs> operators and the nail drivers. I want to know what everyone gets. <laughs> I'll send it to you. In the mail. To present the Bible? Uh, sure. With Kelly's assistance, of course. Yes, yes. So basically, you know, we we have we have the bond money, and we are accruing interest, and we are showing that quarterly. But what we would like to do is start um, the 2021 year with an appropriated a million dollars to keep to keep it kind of make sure that we can pay the bills and all that stuff but we would like to continue it on a monthly basis like we've been doing 
Um, do you have, have y'all have given thought, how much do you think we'll end up spending by the end of 21? Well, uh, still according to them that we will be finished. All of it. All of it. Well. So 14 million or we, so. Right now, so right now there is an un, uh, the un, unallocated, uh, right, uh, right at $675,000 that has not been allocated to anything. Um, we the plan is we still have about 300 uh, no I'm sorry 210 oh gosh we have um, still have quite a bit left in contingency over the next month that will probably come down quite a bit um, but the hope is that yeah we'll have a little bit left over and we can decide what we want to do with that you know when we actually started our planning process and talked about this um, the comment had been made several times that if there were money left in the Blyville Construction Fund and we finished Blyville, that the extra monies could then be utilized possibly down in Osceola. Now we've got $2 million that we're using down there and we can look at that Osceola construction budget if you want to. Uh, we've got $2 million that were minimum. That was, we, it was put right. in there minimum dedicated. But there's uh, much more work that needs to be done down there than what that $2 million will cover. So. Hopefully we'll have just a little bit, you know, left over that we can carry down there and do get more done. Right. So, and as we'll talk about, I guess, a little bit later in the meeting, if on the Osceola construction budget. So right now we have, um, and I'm not exactly sure if the judge has signed off on all of the projects, but they have asked for bids and have received bids that would commit um, the full two million dollars um, and they have gone and they're the last little bit that they would like to do with that two million dollars does exceed the two million dollars by about thirty two thousand dollars so at the moment with the interest earned um, we were going to let them go ahead and have the thirty two thousand out of out of there and that'd be over the two million dollar original number but it's covered by the interest that that two million has earned that is correct and so um, there has been some discussion about that additional 600000 that um, has not been allocated to anything. But at the moment, we feel like the best thing to do is to get a little bit further along in the Blyville construction just to make sure that we don't need it for anything. One of the things that, um, again, they're still talking about having the project basically completed by the end of April and then then do I'm just telling you <laughs> and then do like a punch list through the end of July so and that is straight out of the contractor's mouth <laughs> <laughs> so, Good luck. yeah so. and that is of 2021 <laughs> so excellent you feel good about the projects I do I listen I think they are um, I mean, they seem to be moving pretty smoothly for the most part. A couple of little hiccups here and there, but not anything yeah. to really talk about. For construction projects that large, a couple of little hiccups is nothing. No, no. Always going to be hiccups. Mm, I guess this would have gone with that. I'll, I'll pass it out. It's just a CD on the construction budget. Well, on the, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure on this, like the budget that we have been using um, has them separated. Is that? It's separated on here too, um, but Aaron's number may or may not be exactly the same as this, this on this. It's going to be closed. So is this up the, the amounts that are on this report, like the OCL and what the 24-6 is in addition to the 17 7? Yes. Mm -hmm. The 24-6-7-6 was what was received in 19. Okay. And then the 17 7 4 is what was received actually through September, I believe, of this year. So okay. And Aaron the, probably has through October. So the two of those together is the fund balance. None of that's been allocated out or spent. 
That's right. Okay. That's correct. So there actually is enough money even in the Osceola interest to cover what you're talking about then, David. Okay. Yes, actually the total interest I think at um to not it's not to date, but as at the end of what it, yeah, at, as of eleven five, um it was forty two four thirty eighty eight. But I don't think that included what Peggy transferred in right around the first of November. So, I mean, it's a difference of 300 or something dollars. I've yeah. got it, but. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Uh, $464.16. On the construction budget, we are tracking the interest for the CD and then the two checking accounts quarterly so that it, we don't have to figure it every month. But Peggy does. <laughs> Economic development. I'm going to let Molly answer that those questions. <laughs> Some things never die. I know. Um, there, there. Cliff is wanting to possibly zero out some projects. This, uh, sir, five of them. Are, are those zeroed out in, in this presented budget here? Yes. They are. Um, do you not feel that we need to do some kind of appropriation ordinance, uh, an amendment on those appropriation ordinances? Peggy said we didn't. We've never done that before. No, I said we didn't need to do a court order. A court order. You can't do a court order. Oh. But I think I, I misunderstood you. We can't do a court order to make the change, but since it's been appropriated, if we're going to change that ordinance, uh, I think we need to do a an amending ordinance to unfund it. It doesn't matter to me. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, but it does too. You're chairman of the Economic Development Committee. We just want to, I don't care that we zero them it out. I just want to do it the right way. What do you think? Well, Peggy seems to have a grip on how to handle the fund balances and I thought we could do it by court order, but I was trying to find a legal way to do it. Whichever you think is the best way to get them zeroed down is fine with me. I, I know an amending ordinance would, would definitely cover our butts on the corn court. Well, let's uh, cover them. <laughs> and, and we don't have to make a big to-do. We just put one together that covers the five that we want to. Let's do it. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll we'd like to put an amending ordinance together. Uh, she has the figures. Cindy does. You got the figures, Cindy? No, oh, she's okay. passed them on to no, you. No, you don't have to right now. But Kelly's really also got them. Okay, so we'll we'll have to reference the the particular ordinances, and then I'll and then and uh, and it can be done. It can be done in the December meeting. It can be done in November meeting. There's no rush on that because what we're talking about is the 2021 budget. So there's there's no real rush. Whatever's convenient. Have you done the court order? Well, so you can stop that. You want to talk about the budget? Your budget? Anything in particular that you want us to know or take note of or look at or no? No more than I said last week. We've got a big industry that he's got a pretty good hook on, but he won't even tell me what it is. But he said it will take all of the money we got left. So that is sizable. Well, when he says that, money that we've got left from in the today, budget today or projected revenues? I would assume he's talking about our balance of about 10 million. It would be significant. You know, the last time we spent 14 million, we got a 1.1 billion dollar project. Still, yeah. Well, that, he just said it was a significant. Big, yeah. Good. I, I hope he brings it to me. And I asked him if he could tell me about it. He said that they are, what is that they promise when they do that? Um, anyway, he can't tell me. Non-disclosure non agreement. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, we don't have a budget from the uh, elections commission yet. Uh, you know, that usually comes from the election commissioners and Melissa uh, as their employee. Next year will be uh, an off election year. Um, I know Kelly's tried to talk to Melissa Tom too, and nicely and rightly so, and, and Melissa's just been really busy, as you can imagine. The 2020 uh, election process being the process that it, it grew into, um, historic numbers and involvement. Uh, but if they don't come up with something reasonably quick, then probably with y'all's uh, nod of approval, we'll, we'll carry over the 2019 figures uh, 2019 was an off election year, and we'll just carry those figures uh, straight across. From 2019? From 2019, not 2020. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. That's, Let's just carry those numbers across then, Kelly. Okay. Then we also have one. Uh, it's an additional motor fuel tax. It was an additional state sales tax that was passed. Uh, the judge is over that. <clears throat> we didn't do anything with it last year. About two hundred fifty thousand, isn't it, Kelly? Something like that. Um, it's more like hundred and sixty something like you know, hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. And then in the expense part, we just used it strictly for fuel. And that's what we've been doing. We've been paying for their fuel out of that uh, this year. But, you know, I asked a couple of times last year if that's how he wanted it, and I didn't get a response. And I don't, I don't know what, you know, I don't know if they want any changes, so. You know, he's, he's had considerable input and thought, I know that he put in on the road department uh, and then on his own departments also, which was, very good. I'd suggest we just carry this one across too. We're using the money. It's under, if he wants to change it, we'll come back and amend it. It's his budget, uh, but we've been using it in his departments. So uh, if he wants to do something different other than buy fuel, we'll let him make those choices and I'm whatever good. he wants to do. I'm good with it. So we'll just carry that one straight across to Kelly unless we hear from the judge and, okay. and make those changes. We're. Where does the fuel, I mean, who, what department is he buying the fuel for, the road department? Yes, and it has to be strictly for road department. Can't be used for landfill or anything. No. <laughs> I knew we weren't getting any of it. Well, okay. shucks. I'm with you. I'm glad you think it. Well. But he pumps the gas in his vehicle from the road, doesn't it, road department? Mm -hmm. so that, you know, I'm not sure, probably. But that helps. Yes, absolutely. It helps. You bet it helps. Absolutely. The grant, too. It was part of the tax. Mm -hmm. All right. Elephant on the table. Uh, raises mixed with uh, insurance cost increases. You know, we've talked two or three times, uh, particularly in our last meeting, about initiating a cost share uh, proposal. Um, Neil brought us one uh, last week, and very briefly, it, uh, it capped the county's base cost share at $800, and anything above $800 was split 50-50 between the county and the employee. And then we'd cover, at least for this year, the uh, cost share of, on the employee side with a raise. When we, in all these numbers that you've looked at, we've incorporated a $1,000 raise just to give us a look-see and, and an idea of, of what it would look like without being a committal. So, uh, Justice Ash, uh, I hope Justice Ash is watching. He was last week. Justice Ash is not, uh, he's been COVID quarantined. Uh, um, but it hasn't kept him from thinking. So he came up with a proposal that was much far uh, more ranging. Uh, a lot larger cost share increase. Uh, very briefly, he was talking about uh, giving the employees a significant raise of a few thousand dollars, but then shifting the bulk of that back over into the cost share program so that their, their net dollars would still give them a small raise for the year, but on paper their salaries would look four or five thousand dollars higher. Uh, 
and, and that's, a, that's a, a good proposition and would certainly make us look Jessup sound. But as Kelly got into it and got to uh, researching the impact, because it is a stair-step process. So I'm gonna use round numbers. If you give an employee a $5,000 raise, the cost of the county is much more than $5,000. <coughs> the cost of the county also includes an increased cost in retirement, and an increased cost in taxes. And uh, on the basis of the numbers that Justice Ash gave to Kelly to kind of look at and work with, it would have ended up costing the county over an additional $200,000 more, give or take, a little plus, $200,000 plus. Uh, it's a, a more involved process than what Justice Burge proposed last week. And so what I'm what I personally propose is before we get into something that deep and that involved, um, that we start those serious looks mid-year next year, July 1st, uh, let the insurance committee at that time start talking about, you know, do we want to rebound? We didn't this year. There was no reason in July 1st for us to suspect that we were going to have the cost increase in insurance that we have incurred. We had a number of employees, almost 30, move off the county insurance and over on to Medicare. Those uh, 26, 27 employees, I would have thought would have been in the high risk group because they are of age to participate in Medicare. So you'd think as we get older, we have more medical issues. And we thought that that would more than offset any liabilities that we might have that would cause a cost increase. It didn't. And we didn't know that until Justice Nelson got informed just a, a very few short weeks ago. So there wasn't any reason for us to look at all this revamping and redoing until just the last two or three weeks. But it is an involved process and, and so Justice Burge has revamped his proposal just a little bit. I'm going to let him go over that and my recommendation is going to be that we give his new proposal a serious look and, and try to incorporate that or something very similar with the idea that we'll turn it back to the insurance company July 1st of next year and maybe look at a more sweeping uh, review and, and change if, if necessary. So with that, Justice Burge, would you mind sharing with us what you've done now? I'm going to pass this out. It's very, what I'm advocating today is a very simple change there was some discussion last at our last meeting about uh, will you're actually taking something away from the employees going back to the eight hundred dollar mark at the thousand dollar level and what i'm proposing today is that we change that raise to twelve hundred dollars hundred dollars a month twelve hundred dollars annually per employee with everything else staying the same. It increases the cost to the county by about $40,000. And we put us on a, uh, a plan where any increases above that would be uh, split, anything above the $800 a month would be split 50-50 between the county and the employees. I have both of them outlined. One of them is for $1,000 per employee per year. The other is for $1,200 per employee per year. And it shows that um, the employee part based on the, right, I'm sorry, Sandy. Thank you. Stephen. It shows that the rate that the employee would have would be um, forty-eight dollars and six cents per month. The raise would be a hundred dollars a month minus taxes uh, and so forth, Social Security and Medicare. So that would kind of make everybody whole. It would kind of get us to the point, Betty made the point that uh, Justice Hepper made the point that right now we're paying 839 I believe it is, and that we were actually going to be taking the $39 away from the employee. 
Well, we really weren't. We'd only been taking half of it. But this will pretty well wipe out and be sure that we're not taking basically anything away from the floor. Maybe a few dollars, two or three dollars or something. And that's the only change in this. But I, you know, we've talked about this a long time. And it, it's, it's just a situation where, you know, we can't absorb large increases every year and continue to give right. raises and bonuses. The other point about this was $1,200 would go on the Jessup numbers rather than $1,000, which would help us a little more on that too. And as, as I mentioned last week, if, if we get in a situation where the insurance is gonna go down, then the employee gets the benefit of it going down as well as the county mm -hmm. because their portion would be reduced also. But this holds their, you know, this would hold the county's portion at $800. So if it goes down to 750 if we have a good year and it goes down to 750 the employee pays nothing. Pays nothing. If it ever goes down below that $800, the employee pays nothing. And in that case, they would get, you know, the whole $1,200 that were given them this year and any other subsequent raises that they would be receiving and I mentioned last week and, and many of you saw those comparisons comparing Kelly or some, someone got some comparisons we're, we're paying far and above most any, anybody around us or in the county that any of the counties or municipalities based on those numbers some of them uh, have different coverage and from what I understand it's not as good a coverage as what our employees have. And that's the proposal for discussion. And these are not totally, it will probably run a little bit more than this because I don't know exactly, I didn't know exactly how many employees we have, but I'm, it'll be under $300,000, I'm pretty sure, the total increase. Mr. Nelson, your committee. Thoughts? I don't have a one of them here except me. Well, I, you're the only one that counts. Molly. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Miss Molly. <laughs> yeah, you're able to sit in here. That. You're number two. <laughs> it looks fine to me. I, honestly, it looks good to me. Yeah. Uh, as many employees as we have, we can have that many ideas about how to go about this. I agree with that. You're um, right as many numbers as uh as we have we could have that many suggestions it could be a 700 dollars base it could be a thousand dollar base you know i mean we've got to settle somewhere and try to be fair to both the employee and the county and i i think this strikes a very reasonable moderate position where it's if you pretty fair to both if you do this and you find out in January or February that it's not working, that we were wrong about something, change it. There's nothing that can't be fixed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, absolutely right. Absolutely. And, and I think we need to keep in mind too, and that's one reason I think we need to kind of, to the best of our ability, temper what we are trying to do. We, there's a good possibility here if we were to lose an arbitration suit there's a good possibility here we may have to dig up close to a million dollars mm -hmm. that's right. to pay well, insurance that's not true really we are not on the hook for that but somehow some way i'm sure that we would contribute to it but we would have to i mean no i don't think so justice Burke. i don't think that we have to legally well not legally probably but maybe morally. Morally. Yeah. Well, now, I'm speaking more morally, morally than legally. <laughs> let, me inter, let me interject. Yes, sir. Absolutely. The, inter, uh, the insurance committee voted to send to the finance committee a request that y'all consider us, the finance committee, to put a million dollars in escrow. I don't know if anyone's told you. Escrow a million dollars, take one of our CDs, put it in escrow, notify, uh, let Jeremy know, type up a letter where we can notify all of the people 
that are harassing our employees that, number one, they will get their money because a million dollars from the county is in escrow. Number two, that should we lose this, like Justice uh, Bird said, you can have your money, or 80%, or 50%. However, we decide to do it. We being the insur uh, the finance committee. That was a recommendation because we didn't have anything else to do to help them to get them relief than the escrow in case we lose it. And of course, if we don't lose it, then they'll get 100% immediately. Hopefully, it'll be immediate. Now, I think everybody that's here understood that's what we recommended to the finance committee for y'all to say yes or no. So. For us to say. Okay. <laughs> Justice Jackson, what are you thinking? Um, well, in the interest don't hide it well. No, I know. Well, no, I mean, I agree. <laughs> I mean, we discussed, we discussed uh, several possibilities in the insurance uh, meeting, um, and this really did seem to, to be a good, you know, a potential solution or the best solution we have at the moment without simply just paying medical bills for people. Um, so I, we, I don't know that we decided if it would, it might work. It would certainly encourage um, doctor's offices not to turn, you know, people over to collections. But as Jeremy stated, it's not, go, it, there's no, I mean, they, they still can do what they want to do. But now everybody recognizes this could cost the county a million dollars. Well, that was, yes, that was brought up. Don't want to yes, hide nothing. yes, no, that was brought up. Well, and so it, that would definitely put us on the hook. It would cost us money, or that million dollars, only if we lose, and we already have 50% guaranteed out of that. No, no I don't, I don't think they're aware of no. no. Did they not offer us 50 or 60 or 70%? No, it hasn't made it to the arbitrator yet. But they did say that that would be on the table. I, I have not heard that. I haven't no, heard, I that. heard that. that You'd have to ask Mr. Thomas, our attorney. I, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy might have said that. I haven't heard it. He did. Somebody said it. I didn't dream it. So if, if that were the case, and we could get some more facts and figures only if this group is willing to consider it, move on, get some figures, make a decision. I'm just simply trying, if it were me and the county did nothing, I would be concerned. Me too. I'm trying to, for those who have these major bills, medical bills, I'm trying to find them some relief and get them help them. Yeah. Justice Burge? Well, in the, in the, the discussion when uh, Jeremy was here was if, if we do this, and I think we should, he's going to draft a new letter make it available to all the employees that have a problem and hopefully that will take the pressure off from the employees standpoint of the collections and so forth and send these to the uh, physicians or whoever the bills who has the bills and maybe that will keep them from turning them over for collection and so forth that was the premise of the whole thing I don't know much else we can do at this point. I did ask uh, Jeremy, would this be settled by November? He said no. By Christmas? He said no. So we're looking at... Sometime after the first year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it could be... Well after the first year. Well after the first year, yes. So this is not something that's going to be settled tomorrow. And what a, so my question to Jeremy was, well, if that's the case, if we're going to put this over here in escrow, why would we not just go ahead and just pay the bills and then re recoup the money? And Jeremy felt like that we would, there would definitely be a negotiating of that figure that we, uh, that we, at some point, we would negotiate with whoever. So he didn't think that was. He didn't the right. think we should move forward like that. Mm -mm. All right, so. 
Um, I didn't mean to jump in, but you, you were talking about insurance. That's where I this was going. something that you needed to be aware of before you make this decision. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no. It's all tied together. It's all tied yeah. together. No, you were very timely. Uh, escrow. Have, has anybody discussed the process? Are you familiar? The process with real estate, I can tell you what that is. That you have to have, if it's a million dollars, you have to have that million dollars deposited somewhere and it's out of your reach for the period of time that you set. If you're buying a house and you're going to escrow a half of it, 500000 you escrow it somewhere, some bank, real estate company, whatever. But you can't draw a check on it. All right, so, yes ma'am. Okay, so if that's the case, so if we had to take that from the CD, would that would we still be able to use that money in budgeting? Because it's it would be on hold. It would take it away from our budgeting process. Mm -hmm. that, and so it'd be nine hundred thousand dollars we couldn't budget against mm -hmm. unless we did this after. The after the, we could do it after the first of the year. Okay, I'm just saying. Just. But I think you're right. I think it would. I mean, January one, we could make it. January 1. It probably would take that long to... Well, we're going to have to explore the legal process. So we've got two deals on the table. Do we accept and move forward with Neil's proposal here? And then the other one, do we move forward on the potential escrow issue? Because if we want to move forward on that, then we need to explore the legal process and parameters of doing that. We need to sit Jeremy on that and uh, and then bring it back to us so that we can get that going. I, I'll make a motion that we accept Justice Burge's proposal for the 2021 um, budget as far as the insurance and the increase in salary. Cost share and raise the $1,200. I think so. If, if, if it works, I think the 1200 would be great. I think we can do that if we don't mess with our yeah. income too much right now. Okay, we got a motion and a second that we accept Justice Burge's proposal uh, using the $1,200 salary increase portion and a cost share of uh, setting a base uh, county compensation for, per employee of $800 a month and then a 50-50 cost share between the county and the employee above the $800 per month. And this will be a new policy uh, that will extend from year to year unless amended by uh, future quorum courts. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. All right, do I have a motion that we move forward with the uh, escrow proposal and start the uh, gathering of the legal information and, and parameters? I make that motion. I second. Okay, so we have a motion on the table that the county look at uh, the- let's, let's call that explore, Cindy. Yeah. Yeah. Explore the possibility, uh, the legal process, and the legal requirements of setting up a $1 million escrow uh, dedicated to the uh, 2019 employee insurance costs that uh, are not being covered, uh, currently not being covered by the 2019 insurance program. Uh, and that will remain in escrow do we want to set a date or until such time as that case is settled? You know, you just... Maybe that's in the parameters no, that we need to find from a, Jeremy. You just a good point. If they know that this is going to go away March 1st, it may put a fire in their rear end to get this done. So, I don't know. Having a deadline on it sounded good to me when you said it. We could, at least for the first quarter of 21, uh, with the, the first, expire of March 31st. Maybe first two, when that's... First that, two quarters? That would get us... I think it'd be two quarters for yeah. you. Have okay, so uh, for um, the first two quarters of 2021, mm -hmm. expiring January 30th. And then what will... So if, if this passes, we got a motion. Do we have a, do we have a motion? I second it. Oh, yeah, we got a motion and a second on the table. So. If we, if we move forward on this, then the next step is going to be we're going to turn this over to Jeremy Thomas as uh, legal counsel. I want to meet with him. You want to meet with him? Okay, wonderful. 
uh, chairman of insurance? Uh, yes, sir. That'd be great. And uh, so we've got a motion in the second that we move forward with this million dollar escrow, uh, escrow proposal um, with, a, with the idea in mind that it probably won't be effective till right after the first year so it doesn't affect our 21 budget right. process. But at least Jeremy can be working on it. He can have it in place. We can immediately, you know, we have an organizational meeting right after the first of January. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Where it's a new year, new election year, and we're required uh, after everybody's sworn in that the following Monday, by the following Monday, it's I think within five days that we have to have a, an organizational meeting, and we could have it in, in place and maybe ready to pass at that time. Does that sound okay with everybody? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cool. So, in the 21 budget Kelly. process. Kelly. Kelly. I just have one question before we move away from insurance. This $800 cap is specifically for health insurance, right? Yes. So yes. the county is going to continue to pay life and vision and dental at 100%. I just want to make sure, you know. Because I had in mind that health insurance. That's okay. what we've been talking about. Yeah. There is a small increase in the dental, and so I just want to make sure that, that we are to absorb that and pay 100% of those. 30. When you say small, what are you it's talking small. about? It went from $20.58 per employee per month to like twenty one twenty. Oh, yeah. No, that's $200 a month. That's, yeah. yeah. Just go ahead and absorb it. Okay. And we're not in a rush here. We want to make sure you're you're good. I just want to make sure that I understand everything before I start plugging all these numbers in. Absolutely. So, okay. I mean that's fine. I can do the P forty eight oh six per month on medical, and then the other states the same <clears throat> at one hundred percent. All right. This pretty well concludes the expenditure budgets that we've asked everybody to bring to us. Um, if you look at the calendar, I'm talking about this month's calendar and where we're at today. Today is November the 9th. Um, next Monday is the 16th. The following Monday is the 23rd. Our regular quorum court meeting is Tuesday, November 24th, uh, Tuesday before Thanksgiving. I personally am going to be on the next two Mondays. I'm not going to be, in fact, the next two weeks. Uh, I'm going to be out of town. I mean, out of state, like out of town. Um, almost out of country. Almost, almost out of country. That's exactly right. And that wouldn't have been the first either. But um, uh, and, and just talking with some of y'all, I, I think the desire has been to give Kelly enough time to put all this together, especially since we're making all the insurance changes. Uh, we changed the raise just now from a thousand to twelve hundred dollars. Uh, that we we plan on passing the 21 budget in the December meeting, if that's okay with everybody. That gives Kelly enough time to make all these changes and to give anybody that has Melissa with the election commission, the judge with additional fuel, uh, motor fuel tax, if, if anybody's got any little changes, they've got plenty of time to get those in. And it's not just gonna absolutely kill Kelly trying to put all this together. Uh, also, uh, been looking at the regular monthly expenditures overall emailed out to you um, we, we'd like to talk today about any regular business that we'd like to take care of at the regular November meeting in two weeks um, you know we, we only had a few JPs at the last meeting so we had a couple ordinances uh, that we didn't get to vote on and we had already decided that um, those could wait until the December meeting so we need to be sure that we add those two ordinances to our regular monthly meeting, Tuesday the 24th. And those two ordinances were the one that established the CARES Act fund that would be receiving any money from the COVID uh, reimbursements. And then the other one was the uh, appropriation money for the construction fund at the amount of $250,000 for last month. Do you have any idea of what you would like to do towards that for this coming month? Yes, so um, in last um, last week's meeting, so the pay app for last month um, on the construction mostly was um, just to the contractor and that was for almost $800,000. So if you add on 
the 250 that was not appropriated before um, we were it was, it was, we didn't have enough of us but we'd like for us to discuss today appropriating a million dollars into the account so change that 250 to a million to a million mm -hmm. is that a motion yes second from some got two second. seconds uh, on favor uh, so we'll change that 250 uh, to a million dollar appropriation out of the Blyville Courthouse Construction Fund. Oh, and do I need? Do you need? Do I need? Do we need to do a separate appropriation for the um, for the interest? To, to is, it, is it going to be expended in this next month? No, it won't. No. No. Okay. If it was going to be expended, yes. Okay. But if it's not, no. Okay. You got some breathing room there. <clears throat> In, do you have any economic development business, you know, new business that you know of of any kind? I'm going to call a special meeting when I find out what that business is. Okay, cool. Peggy, you got any business that we need to add on the regular agenda for the regular phone court meeting for November, ma'am? Um, I don't know about that, but I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, on the construction fund, the Blama construction fund, after they um, issued some checks today, so that fund is going to go down substantially. So the CD, when I, um, I mean, I'm going to have to take some money out of that CD just do you want me to just do a partial withdrawal on that CD or what do you want me to do? Cash it all in and, and then rebuy. I think so, yeah. It's like, kind of, are we going to do this or are we going to do that? And you say yes. At this point right now, it would be making more money in the checking account, but I don't know how much longer that will be. What would you recommend as treasurer? Well, I mean, I don't know how their expenses are going to come in. That's that's what I'm asking. Well, if it, it can be sitting in the checking account and and not appropriated. Right. Well, I will tell you this. So, just um, if you if we go on the basis of what they're saying, you know, um, the next few months should be will be expending hefty amounts. You know, so. If that, I don't know if that helps give you, helps you make a recommendation on what we should do. If right now we will be we'll be earning more interest in the checking account, it may be maybe better just to put it there. Yeah. Because again, uh, which we'll all wait and see, but if they're going to have the bulk of the work done by April, then that's, that's a, what I was going to say. That's a lot of money. I mean, that's a, yeah. a lot of money every month. And you say we're making as much or more in the checking account as we were in CD anyway? For right now, yes. So there's no real advantage, and if it changes, then we can change later if we wanted to. There was, but that all changed a while back. I mean, it, it was doing good in the CD, but that all changed a while back. Okay. So it sounds like recommendation must would be cash it in and put it in the checking account. Okay. That was one question I had. Uh, the other thing was... I don't know if um, Kelly mentioned this to you or not. I did mention it to her. I think just the other day, Mayor Wagner, or maybe Cindy mentioned it to you, contacted Cindy, I believe, about the uh, senior citizens in Manila. We've talked to that. You, you've already taken care of that? Today. Okay. And the other thing, and this is not my um, territory really, but has anything ever been decided about the circuit clerk's, um, her accounts, is, the, is there going to be any changes made about the one that she's going in the negative in every month? Do you, have you worked out anything with her on that or? We worked on her budget. So, so for 2021, there is going to be a pretty big chunk that's not going to be in 30 she, she took her salaries out of that she changed she completely revamped that okay 
but between now and the end of the year, I'm not sure what the plan is. Yeah. Next month or so, you may be in trouble, but for well, we 21, it got fixed. Well, we can't be in trouble at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> she can't be in trouble at the end of the year. No. The only other thing I was going to say, Susan's not here. Um, I think she broke a record, really, as far as tax collections. Uh, for the month of October, uh, they collected like 15, almost $16 million in current tax collections. So that was more than we've ever collected. And I know County General's going to get like $1.2 million. Okay, and that's not the tax settlement no, either. No, that's not the tax settlement. That is just for the month of October, okay. taxes. And I didn't mean to be short about the senior citizens deal, but we did discuss that just a little bit early. Okay, and so sure. it was appropriated, but it was appropriated out of the senior citizens budget. And uh, so I'd, I'd talked to Kelly and then I talked to, to Cindy and uh, earlier today. And uh, since it was coming out of the senior citizens budget, Molly asked us uh, about it the last time we discussed her department and budget in here if she could still take that out and and we told her at that time yes it's five hundred dollars a month uh six thousand dollars a year that uh, it started with judge terry brassfield and it was an agreement between the county and uh, city hall in manila that we would supplement uh, the senior citizens to that amount on a yearly basis um so Cindy talked to uh, Amanda earlier today, and Amanda did say yes. She did leave that in her budget when uh, after she had talked to us. I want to believe that was back in July, June or July, when they were working. Their budget's different than ours, right. and uh, and she she included that in her 2020 budget. Uh, she honestly couldn't say as to whether it got paid in 2019. Now the mayor's office, um, and Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong now, but the mayor's office has the Manila mayor has contacted the judge's office and said they didn't get paid for 2019 or 2020. I don't know, and, and Amanda wasn't sure either, so the only thing we can do is ask Kelly to see if, I know it hasn't been for 2020, but we just have to ask if you could check, see if it got paid for 2019. I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure that we did discuss it last year and that, you know, I don't think he did. He so, asked about it last year. You know, we, we did budget, but now, guys, uh, <laughs> the budgets die at the end of the year, uh, every year, and uh, we still need to pay the 2020 for sure that we want to back up and pay the 2019. It would come out of the senior citizen's budget is where it would come out of. Did Amanda understand that? She just said she didn't know if it was uh, 2019 had been paid or not, but she did leave it in for the 2020 budget. Well, we do definitely need to pay the 2020, and uh, uh, maybe we need to just double check with Amanda. We don't want to break her paying a 2019 bill here in November of 2020. Uh, so I'll be glad to, y'all, you can talk to her, Kelly, if y'all to, or I'll call her if you'd rather I called her to see if, if she feels good about paying the 2019 budget out of her money at this point. But we do need to pay the 2020. Okay. Oh. What else, Peggy? That's all. You were just a little fountain over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're glad to have you every year. Harley always scares me when he comes because I know he's thinking. He's just, he's one of those silent thinkers. You know, they made a statue of him one time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good news is that I talked to people at Nucor. They're finishing up a, uh, one of their new things, poly agreements up there. That, if it goes into effect, we could, uh, County General could reap another $61,000 off of that for their share because it's like the 175 million dollar one but they're finished uh, they actually putting it online and try, uh, working right now on it so 
something that came to me, and I'm, I'm checking it out. I'm not saying it's going to, uh, what they're going to do with it. But you notice all the aircraft sitting out there on the base. Yes, sir. They're not paying taxes on the numbers. Uh, I'm finding out why. So uh, it it's sitting in our county for over a year. We're supposed to be able to tax it. So I've got uh, people working on it. I've called a couple of places. Uh, so if it comes by, we'll have a pretty good chunk coming from there. But seeing them sitting there, I don't care if they're running and they'll never run again. We all know that. But the thing is, they're sitting out there and it's kind of like a junk car. You got it in your backyard, you got the license to it. Until you get rid of it and uh, you pay taxes on it. Cliff shared a, a comment with me the other day, and uh, both you and Justice Nelson may be able to verify, but uh, he said we've, uh, we've had over a billion dollars in investments <coughs> made in Mississippi County in, in the 2020 year with these various projects like you're talking about, the expansions. Right. Uh, you know, without actually bringing in another steel mill or whatever, we've still had a billion dollars in investments made in Mississippi County that, that still goes back to the economic development tax. That still will continue to pay us in the future. That's, years that's because come. anytime we get a pilot agreement, we were figuring for him on the pilot agreements and things and uh, what they were bringing in. It's unbelievable what these pilot agreements have uh, produced right out the bat because it, even though they get that discount uh, coming in and then you do it from 20% of that. It's just like this $175 million dollar thing. That's that's extra money. Even though I know y'all heard that the, we went up $17 million over last year's uh, abstract. So we've added another $17 million uh, assessed value on. So every time something like that happens, then this is gravy that we're getting on top of all this. And I expect that we'll see more from Nucor. I know we're gonna get some more from, uh, extra money from uh, uh, Big River. So, uh, possibilities are unbelievable. So all I can say, I don't see us going the other direction. And uh, prospect mm -hmm. is just building a big solar field out there. That should be taxable too. Oh, yeah, yeah, everything. I, Anything that goes with the power, that goes to the Public Service Commission and the, uh, when it comes to that. And so that's what's going to happen there. If they don't pick it up, I will. And uh, it'll probably be kind of like oh, that one on the Dale Park one. They're not going to like what I put on Quite a legacy. <laughs> 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 Justice Nelson is referring to the legacy he leaves us. That's right. <laughs> All right, so you've given us the good news. I'm going to put you in the hot seat for a second. Go ahead. Uh, you've got an employee retiring December 31st. Right. Why can we not close that slot? Why shouldn't we close that I'm, slot? I'm working on it. Can we defund that and close that? No, because that's uh, not that one. I'm, you, uh, you're going to get one. Can we have a slot? You will be getting a slot. I just got to figure out which one. I can live with that. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm not going to add another employee. Okay. All right. I'll let you know. You'll let that one just through attribution. Yeah. Attrition, not attribution. Attrition. Okay. Yeah, then I'll live with that. That's, I, man, that's two good news. What are you doing today? You ought to come to more meetings. <laughs> I'd have been at the last one, but you, uh, the <laughs> health department wouldn't let me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> they got more restrictions on me than they did uh, the one that had the COVID. That's probably for both of our sides. <laughs> yeah, both things. <laughs> Um, Kelly, you got anything on this, hon, that we need to, business-wise, for the regular, more monthly meeting? Well, I do. Just, did you want to discuss what I need to do about the vacation days? Ah, uh, yes, I did. Um, we've got a vacation buyback issue. Um, the vacation buyback is where an employee has extra vacation days that he simply doesn't have enough time to utilize. Before you get into that, I thought that was something that Rick was going to take care of when he came back. That's personnel. Is that? 
it is personnel. I mean, it's personnel and finance, I think. Um, Go ahead. Well, we'll, we'll the, it. I haven't talked to Justice Ash about it. Is that something he preferred to do himself? No, well, I don't know. Tell me, is this something that could wait till December? Or is it something that's being requested immediately? Let's do it. No, it, I mean, it can wait until the December meeting. Well, not if the, they're going to take it before they lose it. I mean, that's true. The, the ones I've heard from, it's just a couple, but they don't have a chance to take it between now and the end of the year and haven't been able to take it because so many people being out for COVID. That was the complaint. Um, and we put a stop on it, you know, a few years ago just because funds were not available. Funds are not budgeted for this. You know, we don't have anything extra in the budget for this. Um, but you're saying just a couple of employees? Yes, but as soon as that's out, I don't know how many are eligible for it, you know. So you're saying right now they cannot do that? Is that right now, it's, it? yes, it was added to the policy book, the, the um, phrase, when funds are available. So we've basically not had funds available for that in a few years. Their, their question is now, can we make funds available since you know, they've had to deal with COVID and just different exceptions this year. That was the question. You've got places where they don't have enough employees anyway, like jailers, you know, patrolmen. I mean, a lot of that is in the Sheriff's Department or even, I don't know, I'm just guessing senior citizens because they're shorthanded. But the key places where they don't already have enough people and, and then COVID, you know, squeezing that down even more, they've just simply not had enough time to take their days off, to take vacation time. Uh, at the same time, we're probably playing them overtime, but, uh, but they're losing their vacation days. Uh, the, I don't, uh, one or two people would not be harmful to the county, but are we gonna open the proverbial can of worms? Um, you know, uh, uh. another option may be to allow a carryover. That's exactly. I didn't. I didn't know if that was going to be like. But you know, what if we did a carryover just for 2021 with these unused days, not to start it, but what if we just. Well, okay, so now minute. then if we're not talking money, we're going back to personnel. Oh, you're right. So Rick should decide. <laughs> so. And I think the policy said up to five days. It had a limit on how many. Yes, you can I'm only request a sale about five days. You have to have 10 years of service. Oh, okay. uh, there won't be a lot of employees, you know, if you were to go that route. But. I think it'd be a good idea to let them look personnel look Me at too. it on maybe on carryover. Basis. Okay. I do too. All right. So just get with Justice, that maybe Cindy can get with Justice Ash about scheduling a, a meeting if y'all, if that's what you want to send yeah. it to her. We call it Pass the Buck. <laughs> yeah. I'm not on first one. <laughs> I guess then that my only other question would be, um, are we still having a meeting next week? Are we still going to have no. a regular? No, not unless y'all want to meet. I will not be here, but we're trying to take care of the regular monthly meeting now. And uh, after Thanksgiving, we'll come back that first Monday after Thanksgiving, which will be December something. Uh, uh, no, November 30th. November 30th, okay. Um, let's plan on, on meeting again November 30th. We'll skip the next two Mondays. You'll have regular quorum court Tuesday, November the 24th. And then we'll come back here November 30th, and, and that gives Kelly a full, um, not quite three weeks, but um, almost three weeks to, to put the numbers, the final numbers together, let us look at them, to present them. It still gives us an opportunity if we need to tweak, that we can tweak uh, in plenty of time to make the December meeting. It's okay? Okay. It's all right. I think that's all the questions I have, thank you. Cindy, you got any questions, dear? Steve, you got any questions of any kind? Any of our, Alex, got any kind of questions? No. Thankfully. Okay, we'll call a meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you all. Okay.